Welcome back to DIY with Diamond Tack Co. Today we're going to go over how to do a doubled up crown knot. Now a crown knot is typically done with three strands. This will be done with six, but it will follow the exact same pattern as you would a regular crown knot. And you can even add more strands if you need to or an uneven amount of strands. So starting out, you're just going to want to form three groups. These can be three groups of one, three groups of two, two groups of three, and one group of two. The amount of strands really doesn't matter, just the amount of groups. For this video, we'll just refer to them as one, two, and three, and we're going to be working in a counterclockwise pattern. So this far right group is going to be my group one, and I'm going to take it to the left in a counterclockwise pattern over group two. You'll want to make sure to leave a decent sized gap on that first group, and I find the easiest way to hold this is to pinch both group one and group two together closer to the base of group two. From there, you'll take group two, again moving counterclockwise, folding it back over group one, and then on top of group three. For our last group, we'll take group three, going over group two, and in that gap we left in group one. Now we're gonna keep moving in that counterclockwise pattern and we're gonna start slowly tightening down all of our strands. So we'll move back to our group one strand and suck it down a little bit, and then we'll move over to two, suck it down and do the same thing for three. And just keep going around in a counterclockwise pattern a couple times until you have it nice and tight. This is a great low profile knot. It shrinks down quite a bit more than an overhand knot would. And even with mule tape being as slick as it is, it holds its shape really well long term. Now this is a knot that you're gonna wanna cut and burn to finish off. So if you're not comfortable working with fire, this might be a part that you can skip or you can ask someone for help with it. And before we move into the burning process, we just wanna check our surroundings. So is there anything below us, above us, or around us that could possibly catch on fire or be a problem? You're also gonna see me hold pretty close to the areas that I'm burning. You do not have to do this. You can hold it back a few inches with your hands or you can hold it with a pair of pliers. You just wanna take every precaution you can so you don't accidentally burn your fingers or get some melted mule tape or paracord on them. When you go to cut your groupings, you don't wanna cut it much longer than half an inch. The longer the strands are, the more likely they're actually gonna catch on fire. And it does happen once in a while, but we're not actually trying to catch them on fire. We're trying to melt them down to the point where they bubble over into the strands next to them. This helps our knot create a really strong, solid bond so it doesn't unravel at all. So you kinda just wanna find that sweet spot because again, if you cut them too short, the knot can unravel. And if you cut them too long, they can catch on fire or it can just take forever to get those melted down. So after you've melted it down a little bit, you're gonna wanna push it down and smooth it out. I like to use a wider set of pliers for this because the rope does cool down pretty fast. A spoon, oddly enough, works really well too if you don't have pliers on hand. I would try and stay away from needle nose though. They don't seem to work as well. And there you have it, your crown knot is officially done. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe share with a friend. You can also check out diamondtackco.com for all of our product links, DIY guides, and tech kits.